Hey everybody, Charlie Niner Two here, and welcome to Mist. This is a game that came out, oh man, many, 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 many moons ago. I remember right around the time when you started getting uh, CD drives on PCs. This was always the game you wanted to see people play because it was just, well, at the time it was revolutionary. Now, I never played the game. I saw demos of it in. Uh, stores like electronics boutiques stuff like that i believe my cousin had the game and he had a hewlett packard pc i remember that back in the day that was a big thing and uh he had a copy of mist but i never played it personally i've only seen bits and pieces here or there so they did a re-release uh well a remake rather uh, i believe it came out on the 26th that was a few days ago so i saw this one browsing through street uh, steam and i figured you know what i'm gonna play this I want to play Mist for the first time ever with new graphics, and you guys are going to join me. Let's get into it. New game. Puzzle randomization. Select your puzzle solution preference. If you're new to Mist, we recommend selecting classic. Well, I am new. There you go. 1993 is when that came out. Let's see. How old would I have been in 1993? How old would I have been 10 years old when Mist came out? So we're going to go classic. Hopefully I won't get stumped and have to look anything up. Oh, this is cool. Y'all, you guys can't see it. I have a Razer Huntsman Elite keyboard. I realized the moment I fell into the fissure that the book would not be destroyed as I had planned. And the lights on the keys into that are reflecting the screen. Of which I had only a fleeting glimpse. I've tried to speculate where it might have landed, but I must admit that such conjecture is futile. Still, the questions about whose hands might one day hold my misbook are unsettling to me. I know my apprehensions might never be allayed, and so I close, realizing that perhaps the ending has not yet been written. Sorry for interrupting the audio there, but yeah, my keyboard, I, I, I don't know a way of showing you this, is reflecting uh, what's going on the screen with the way that it's lit up. Right now there's just a, a faint uh, light of white light around the J, K, L, I, M, N key area, and then everything else is super dark blue. And when I move my cursor around... Uh, the keyboard's not reflecting it in this area, but for the cutscene, it was mimicking what was going on the screen. All right, enough about my keyboard. Let's move forward. Mist book is what he said. What is the mist book? Sunken ship there. Move my cursor out of the way. Okay. Do I go into the book somehow? Looks like it. Here we are in the mist book. Does this make this mist island? Ooh, look at that water. Okay, so as far as I know, this was a popular style of game back in uh, the mid 90s. Kind of a puzzle adventure, almost point and click game, but 3D. So, what do we got here? We have button. Creepy. All right. And we have ocean. Staircase. All right, let's go in here. Now, as far as I know, I don't know if there's like enemies or a way to die or if it's just figure stuff out. Does this close this? It does. Is there a reason I'd want to close it? OK, 
Okay, got ambient lighting here. All right. Okay. Hologram. Oh, music. Sun's on the ground. Ooh, whimsy. Okay, let's look over here. What's this say? Dimensional Imager. Topographical Extrusion Test 40. Marker Switch Diagram 47. A Water Turbulent Pull 67. I have absolutely no clue what any of that means. Is this a button? Push or interact? Can we interact with this? Let's try this again. This is just to leave. I thought I could interact with these rivets. Can't interact with that rivet. Alright, uh, let's see if there's anything I can interact with here. It doesn't look like it. Oh, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Go back, go back. Can we go back? 67. Water turbulent test. Okay, water turbulent test. Okay. Marker switch diagram 47. 47, go. Back away, okay. And then this should do something different. Ooh. Okay, big switch on almost an obelisk. Okay, what's here? Ah, I didn't read the other one. Let's do that again, let's have it come down. 40, okay. Forty gives us topographical. Okay, so uh, we did a thing. Don't know what that accomplished, but we did it. Let's uh, leave the creepy ice grotto. I know it's not ice; it's just the lights are blue. Okay, so there's mechanisms we can interact with and water press the escape button to open menu okay so it's just save and load it's not like an inventory can we go in here we cannot I imagine we raise this up oh here's that uh, thing we just saw this Not doing anything. Maybe I need to have it active. Oh, there is a run button. Sweet. So, if I remember correctly, the original game was kind of a pre rendered FMV type thing. I imagine you would choose a direction and choose to go that way or choose to turn, and then you would be given a cutscene of you moving to the next area. So, this being fully 3D makes this probably a lot quicker. And a lot more intuitive. Alright, we want to go marker switch. 47. Deep. I don't know if this is going to do anything, but that is the switch we saw. Alright, let's go this way. Let's run, run, run. Hit the button. And marker switch. Ahoy. And do something now. All right, first task filled successfully. Okay, got a couple ways we can go. Giant gear on an overlook. 
which also has one of these switches. Which also doesn't do anything. Can we jump? Oh, no, that's a camera. How do we get out of the camera? Okay, escape does it, but there's probably a better way. Okay, gear over here, ship here, creepy hologram got right over here. Can we go off the path? Not really. All right, what is up here? Okay, lots to take in. Kind of a, okay, a grave over here. Building, mountain, what is this? Some, some people hanging out. It does open. I really did not expect that to open. All right, what in the world is this? Oh my goodness, January? Clearly, we got to go to uh, 18 or 1985, right? Okay, we can change this. I'm assuming we can use these to change the dates. Don't know any dates yet, so we'll come back to that. Here's a grave. Oh, can we use the picture to kind of like remember things? Probably. Okay, I think that actually is a grave. There is another... Oh, maybe we need to make all these up. Because that's what the marker switch image showed us, was that it was up, right? Can we drop down? No, we can't. Cannot drop down there. But I bet that's the case. Up. That's kind of creepy. And let's try over here. That one's already up. So I'm gonna flip them all up. I don't know if I'm onto anything or not, but the image it displayed on the weird hologram thing down there had the lever pointing up. So we'll try that. All right, and now where to? We've got this building. We've got a rocket of some sort over here. Let's go here. What are these? Templar cross? Okay. Are you the same? All C and I? Is this some... Is this some masonry stuff? Masonic stuff? Snake. T tick? No. Ticks have six legs, right? Anchor. Arrow. Whoop, oh, flip you up. What's this? Leaf? And Templar Cross, we didn't see this one. Uh, ostrich or a uh, emu? And that will raise the ship, presumably. But we have to figure out what. Is this anything? Okay, y'all see this, right? Everybody sees this, right? This is changing. Is this supposed to do this? Okay, whatever. Down this way. Okay, here's another one of these. Let's flip you up. Nope, 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 nope. I do not like that. Let's click this. Huh. Didn't expect the door to be a pocket door. What is this? Okay. A safe. A tree with clouds. 
That's right over there, I believe. Pressure. Okay, let's go look at this. Here's the tree. Can we go down there? No. Alright, well, let's start turning some stuff. Open up. Let's do this. Pressure. Oh, wow. Rotating this is not easy. Does it not affect the pressure? Can we crouch? Is there supposed to be something here? Let's see if this changed anything. Uh, it doesn't appear so. Okay. Uh, we need to get more information, I believe. So let's turn this off. You know, just because. Can't do anything here. All right. Creepy room over there. I don't like that. Okay. There's another one of those switches. What does this do? Oh, we can change the time, but we don't know what to yet. Okay, so we need a time. Is this a sundial of sorts? Is this like the long hand? Am I overthinking this? I can't tell quite which way that's facing. So it looks like if that represents the short hand, that's here. If that represents the long hand, that's like here. Maybe like here. All right, let's flip-flop them. Let's do that. No, 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 no. Like that. Okay. Hmm. I might be onto something, but I might be overthinking it. All right, let's go look. All right, let's go look down in the creepy area. like it. Why has it got to be so creepy? Okay. We are in Fallout now. Cool little dials. Bunch of buttons. Is there anything anywhere telling me what I need to do? Or giving me any sort of hints? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ask and ye shall receive. Power to ship. Generator switches. Power, power to ship. So this is power. This is power to ship. This is generator switches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 1. 1. Okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Didn't like eight. But we still have forty nine power. Mm -hmm. Huh. So let's not use eight. Ninety-nine power if we use everything. Eight seems to short circuit the ship. So let's turn everything off. Let's try this again. 
Did we... Did we kill it? Kill it? Let's try again. Yeah, it's not doing to ship anymore. Okay, something wrong with generator 8. I've messed it up. I don't like these creepy sounds. I also don't know how long this game is. Okay, um, we have a few other places we can go. Here is a path. Can we go on top? We can. I don't know why. But it's a thing. These pillars each have one of these buttons. Pretty day. Okay. We can walk up here for some reason. Does it have to do with this? Ooh. What is this? Does that reset the power to the ship? That's the breaker we flipped, huh? Oh, do we gotta flip them all now? Okay, that one's good, it looks like. Okay, so there's this weird ship pointing that way. Can we go in? Need power. All right, well, I think... I think we go turn on everything. There's something down here? No. I think we go turn on the generators again, but this time we skip eight. See what happens. Just run. Run, run, run. Boom. Alright, let's try this again. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Why? Why is it tripping? Hey, circuit breaker. Why are you tripping? problem with me playing games like this is it exposes uh, how little problem solving skills I have. Okay, I didn't do anything. Let's try this one. Why is it that 8 and 9 seem to not want to cooperate? Try this again. Let's skip straight to 10. Let's do 1 through 7 and 10. Now, is it... Is it we're trying to get to 100%? And 8 puts us over 100? Let's try that. Let's try my theory out here. Boom. So what does 8 do if we just hit it by itself? 22. Okay, I see what's going on here. 19. 9. 31. Okay. So we need to see... What does this do? 10. 7. 8. 16. Here, I'm just going to plop a few of them together. Wow, that's already too much? How is that too much? That gets us at 66.
All of them together gets us at 99. All right, we need to figure out how much power needs to go to this ship. That's the answer. We don't know. We, we've assumed it was 100%. Clearly, we're breaking the threshold. Is there a way to determine the threshold? Not without going and resetting this every time. Okay. Keep an eye out for how much power needs to go to the ship. Can we figure it out by process of elimination? Probably, but it's going to take forever coming up here and resetting these circuit breakers every time. So I'm going to reset them this time, and then we're going to continue to explore until we're out of options. And then we'll come back and maybe go little by little until we figure out what threshold causes this to go over. So we know we can do one through seven. We just need to figure out how much more to get to the threshold. All right, so we'll come back to that. We have a main hall here. We probably should have went in here to the beginning. Okay. Use the space bar to take a picture. You can access your photos through the menu. Okay, so, well, this is a picture. Okay. This is a book. Uh oh, what did I do? I deleted something? Whoa. Who are you? Who are you? That's a red page. Okay, red pages. Okay. Anything helpful other than red pages? Red page. Okay. Red pages for the red page, God. Okay. It's a hallway. Looks like it's behind here, maybe. Books. I have called this aged channel wood and it is very different world. It is a very different world. Though it is exactly how I imagined it, it's still amazing to see it with my own eyes. Water covers this age as far as I can see except for a small rocky island. Elsewhere there are only trees which grow directly out of the water. A myriad of thin wooden passageways are built just above the water and disappear into the forest. I assume they were built some time ago for they appear aged. I'm eager to discover more about this land and its people, but I have arrived here late and I must rest. I was awakened this morning by strange noises coming from a pathway adjacent to the one which I had slept. I saw a group of monkey-like people heading in my direction. They had not seen me yet. I did not feel threatened by their presence. Their response to me was one that I would have never expected. After staring at me... For a short time, they fell to their knees and began what appeared to be some sort of ceremonial worship. I tried to speak to them, but they did not understand my language. Instead, they indicated through enthusiastic hand motions that I was to follow them. As we walked, I began to notice the waters below us were changing colors. Slowly, subtly, they were, would change from deep blue to muddy orange, then from muddy orange to beautifully clear. I was so intrigued by the water, I hardly noticed that we had arrived at a ladder. Climbing the ladder led us to their village, which is about 10 meters above the water and can only be reached by rope. Oh, excuse me, rope ladders that stretch from the lower pass to the village level, approximately halfway up the grand trees. It's very interesting watching these people carry out their daily tasks. 
Even after watching them for hours, I did not understand exactly what they were doing. At sunset, they motioned for me to follow them. I followed the creatures to the doorway of an enormous hut. Strangely, once inside, I found that found that the hut appeared even larger than it had from the outside. All right, TARDIS hut. The walls were garnished with bright metals, and in the center of the hut sat the leader of these people. At least he appeared to be their leader, for he sat a meter off the floor in a thick throne. Guards surrounded the strong creature who was dressed in many exotic, colorful fabrics. Next to the leader sat a very old human. At least to some extent he appears human. His hair, which was only on his face and head, was completely gray, almost white, and hung very low around his frail body. His thin head hung limply by an almost grotesque neck that could not hold its head up to look at me. But what a surprise this creature could speak my language. Shortly thereafter, I was given a bed with some hand motions that looked to be telling me to go to sleep. I look forward to learning more. As I suspected, the ancient creature is a human, but he's old beyond his own reckoning and seems almost insane. However, the tree dwellers almost revere him as a god. They are treating me now in the same fashion, which makes me feel very uncomfortable. It is almost impossible to understand this old man. His voice is feeble but wild. He has adopted much of the language of the tree dwellers. He himself told me he had not spoken our own tongue in ages. He attempted to explain to me the history of this place. The following is my best translation of what he has told me. Many years ago, the humans and tree dwellers lived together in this place, which was then a vast island. They interacted very little. The humans dwelt on the ground, and the tree dwellers lived high above the humans. Occasionally, the island was disturbed by mysterious rumblings, which appeared randomly some sort of tectonic or volcanic action, I suspect. The sometimes slight, sometimes heavy tremors would only last a short time, then they would stop, allowing everything to return to normal. One day, things changed. The rumblings began and, began and grew quickly to unprecedented levels. Soon it became apparent that the entire island was sinking slowly into the ocean around them. Many of the humans died that day, but not before sacrificing themselves in order to stop the sinking of the island. The humans who lived through this catastrophe moved into the trees where they gradually died out, maybe because they were unequipped for such an environment, but I am not sure. This is a story the old man communicated to me, although many details are very unclear in my mind. I am especially confused as to how the humans saved the island from completely sinking. In fact, I doubt the accuracy of that part of the story. The island must have stopped on its own, yet the old man believes in the, in the truth of the story as if he had been there. When the tree dwellers worship him, and apparently all humans, if, if he slash they were heroes or gods. The old man ended our conversation today with an event which I will never forget. He began gripping my hands tightly, murmuring something about rest and asleep. He then said, we had expected you to come sooner. These actions filled me with a sort of in immediate dread. With much effort, he stood to his feet. I tried to help, but he pushed me away with more force than I imagined his frail body contained. The tree dwellers quietly surrounded him with very solemn faces. Then they kneeled before him. He walked to each and placed his hand on their heads. All the while, he murmured words which I did not understand. Finally, he turned to me and smiled. Then he closed his eyes and walked off the, out the door and off of the narrow path high in the trees. The tree dwellers were silent. They began a procession down the nearest rope ladder. As I was descending, I saw several of them pick up the body. He had fallen onto a lower level of a walkway and carrying it away. He was laying down at the dead end of a short pier-like structure. With the use of some potion and some of the tree creatures, some of the tree creatures lit the pier on fire and I watched as the flames engulfed him. At this strange funeral proceeded, as this strange funeral proceeded, the waters around the pier changed to dull green. This morning I awoke finding it hard to even believe the previous evening's events. The water is a dull green for as far as I can see now. For some reason the water no longer shifts color. As I wandered throughout the pathways, the creature watched me. Curious to see what I will do next. They are constantly offering me strange objects of affection. I even found food outside the doorway to the room in which I had slept. This is a unique race of beings. I hope to learn their language soon so that, so that I may learn more from them. I have lived in this world for three months off and on, and the tree dwellers have shown great hospitality. I'm even beginning to learn bits of their language. I've decided to return home for an extended stay with my loving wife and my sons, and hopefully return with them. However, I'm sure Catherine will once again refuse. 
I think this age would be a wonderful experience for them all, and I at least look forward to how Siri, Cirrus and Akinar will react to its curious inhabitants. Catherine is staying behind as expected. My sons have returned with me, and they enjoy this age very much. They get along very well with the tree dwellers and are picking up their language surprisingly fast. I have no doubt I will not be too long it will not be too long until they can speak with the tree dwellers much better than myself. I am leaving tomorrow. Oh my goodness, this is a long book. To check on Osmo Osmoian Osmoian age, Cirrus has suggested that I allow him and his brother to stay. The idea unsettles me, I know the boys are growing up rapidly. The hospitality of these creatures is such I could think of no better place to leave them alone for a short while, so I will consent to their request. I warn the boys not to take advantage of the respect of the tree dwellers and have for their ideas. They seem to understand my warning. I have faith they will follow it. Much to my dismay, upon arriving in Everdunes, I learned that Pran and her people are continuing to be menaced by the Choctic? Choctic? I fear their survival and plan on returning to her shortly after checking on Cirrus and Akinar here. See Everdoon's journal for more information. After watching Cirrus and Akinar, I see they are handling things very well. I think I can put to rest any fears about leaving them in Channelwood again. Oh my goodness, I thought this would be over. And for a little longer time. The tree dwellers seem slightly distressed that I'm leaving, but are happy that Cirrus and Akinar are staying behind again. I've been gone for over three days and have been too many different places. I've been to many different places. I had to tell Cirrus and Akinar about Pran's death today, and they were visibly shaken, although they only remember her from their childhood. Catherine has suggested that it would be wise for Cirrus and Akinar to leave Channelwood for a while, and I have to agree. They'll be returning with me when I leave again. I've told my sons that they will be returning with me in two days. They spent the entire night telling me of an adventure they experienced in my absence, and it was rather remarkable. It seems they constructed a boat with the creatures and traveled some ways out into the surrounding waters. I enjoy hearing them talk excitedly of their adventures, and am reminded of my own adventures as a child. I finally understand why the tree dwellers have been giving me their many inks and insisting I write with them. Looking through some of my past entries, I see now that the inks have changed from the black... I thought they were to various different colors. I've shown some of the creatures my journal, and they laughed and howled. I did not know they had such a sense of humor. Even now, as I look through this very colorful journal, I can't help but laugh myself. We will be returning tomorrow, so my sons are with the creatures for last night. They have told me they would like to come to Channelwood again, and also asked if they can visit some other ages alone. Though I will have to think over their request, I believe they have proven to me that they are trustworthy and responsible. Catherine will also have to help me decide whether they are ready for travel alone. For now, I must give my farewells to the creatures, for I do not know how long it will be until I visit this age again. All right, so these are drawings of the tree dwellers. And that's it. Channelwood. Stone slip. Settlement. Miss mechanical okay all right well that's going to be it for this episode thanks for watching if you enjoy my content please consider a like and comment and or a subscribe stay tuned for the next episode we'll see you then bye bye